this video, we are going to calculate formal Lalker condition for the construct's discriminant validity. So let's jump into the data. So this is my data set where I have six different constructs with a certain number of items for each of the constructs. We'll click on Analyze, go to Dimension Reduction, click on Factor. Here, the first thing you have to do is shift all the items that you have into the window of variates or variables. So we are shifting them here. Click on descriptives. Make sure that nothing is checked over here. Continue. Click on extraction. Uh, click on based on Eugene values. And this is selected already over here. Continue. Then rotation. We need very max rotation. Continue. We don't want anything from the scores, so we'll, no, we won't save them. We won't click anything over here. Click on Cancel. Options. Now, within Options, we would click on Suppress Small Coefficients. According to a criteria, anything that's less than 0.5 should be suppressed over here. So I'm putting 0.5 over here. Click on Continue and click OK. Now, we'll move on to the rotated solution, and that's what we are looking for. Look at this one over here. We have rotated solution. And this is what we want over here. I'll click on this box, right click, copy, and then go to my Excel sheet. Here I am on my Excel sheet. I'll, I'll paste my solution over here, delete the header of this table, and then I'll shift all the values to the first column. Now, these are the loadings, or I would simply call them small l, of the items on their relevant constructs. I'll now calculate loading square, or I would say LSQ. And uh, it would simply be equals to the value raised to the power 2. Enter. And I'll sim simply drag and drag that whole calculation up to the end, and all the loading squares are calculated over here. So basically, we have reached up to this point where we have calculated the square of loadings for our items. Before we move on, we need to understand what exactly is a foreigner larker criteria. The foreigner larker criteria says that um, square square of uh, your average variance extracted, it should be greater than the correlation correlation of a construct with any other construct. So uh, that is exactly what we would need to check here. So to do that, the first step would be that we calculate the average variance extracted. So sorry, it's not AEV. It's AVE, so average variance extracted. So that's the criteria over here. So I need to calculate the average variance extracted of all the constructs over here. So for each and every variable, I'll just simply calculate the sum, the average variance extracted. The formula of average variance extracted is average of square of loadings of that particular constructs items. So here we are, equals to average average and I'll take the average of all of these items in RQ, bracket close, enter. And same goes with this next one over here, equals to average and the three values of WR loading square. Here we go. And I'll keep doing the same thing for all of my other constructs. So over here, So here we are. We have calculated the AVE of all the variable, all the constructs that we have in our data. So I'm moving on to the SPSS again. Let's go to the SPSS. Now, here I already have calculated the latent variable scores. 
If you want to know how I calculated the latent variable scores, you can click on the link below that I've given in this video and uh, you would be able to see how the latent variable scores are calculated. Now I'm going to analyze. I'll go to correlate and there, there I have bivariate correlation. Click on that and I'm scrolling down to the latent variable scores that I have over here. So these are all my latent variables that I have here and I'll click on this, look at the options that we have here. And I think that's all that I need. And I will click on Pearson and I'll click on OK. Now I'll click on this correlation box, right click, copy, and then I'll move them to my Excel sheet. I'll click on this box over here right click copy and then i'll move them to my excel sheet all right now you can see that we have uh, simplified our table and we just have the correlations in this table now now, as a next step, we need to calculate square root of AVE. Now, it would be simple as equals to SQRT. And we will select this value that we have here and enter. So this is the same thing that we're going to do for the, for the other five constructs that I have here. Control V, Control V, Control V. And we are done. So we have now calculated the square root of AVE for all of these constructs over here. This is AVE and this is square root, square root of AVE. Now I'm going to copy paste the values where we have one over here. So control C. Then I'll click on one and then click on paste value. You can see it here. All right. So I'll set those the values of decimals to an appropriate level. Yes, I have three decimal points now. So this is WR, control C and control, not control V, but paste value over here. Now. Control C and over here as paste value. It's a bit long process, but if you're really interested in foreigner lacquer condition, this is what exactly you would need to do because SPSS by default does not give you the foreigner lacquer criteria assessment. So two more to go. Control C. Control C and paste it over here. Control B. Okay. Now comes the test time. Now we'll see that the correlations that we have under this value and besides this value should be smaller than the value that we have over here. So I'm going to paint it or orange so that we know that these are the test values. And these are the orange values. We need, to, we need to see that any value that is below the orange value or on the row of the orange value should be lesser than that. So if we look at review quality, the AVE square root is greater than any value that is below it or besides it. So review quality, it's good to go. It has discriminant validity. Now look at the website reputation. It's also good because if you look at the row over here, all the values in this row are lesser than this value and all the values in the column are also lesser than it. Now, if you look at this one, here also we have no issues, though this is a little bit of uh, 
flag raising value 0.704 but still it is lesser than that so we are still good to go now look at this one over here 0 0.688 uh, this is also fine we have a very close match that is 0 0.606 but still it is smaller than that now let's have a look at this one over here we have a value of 0 0.704 and the other value that we have over here it is also 0 0.704 so this is something difficult now evum adoption and and attitude towards evum they have a very very close value we cannot give it a green signal we can say that yes this 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 construct does not have a discriminant value or it's not discriminant from the attitude towards evil. The last one, purchase intention, it has discriminant validity because all the values that are in the column or in the row are smaller than the AVE square root. So this is how you can analyze or assess the discriminant validity of the constructs using the foreigner larger condition. In SPSS, there is a lot of manual calculation, but if you're interested in it, this is how you can do it. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in other videos. Bye for now.